Hello everyone, this is Ravinder Dundra and welcome to my channel. In this lecture, we will continue the topic from class 10 CBSE Geography that is Agriculture. In the previous lectures, we have discussed effort about different different topics in this chapter. In that, we have seen technological and institutional reforms. Before that, we have seen about these food crops, non-food crops, major crops, cropping pattern, etc, etc, etc. So now, in continuation with that, we will discuss something about this contribution of agriculture to national economy employment and output so the next topic is that how much is agriculture contributing to this economy that means how much income is generating from this agriculture and how much how many people are employed in this agriculture then what is the output that is generated from this agriculture so basically we will discuss the contribution made by the agriculture to the country in different different ways it may be in the form of employment maybe output or maybe in the form of income so let us see whether it is uh, contributing more or less then we will also see what are the problems faced by the agriculture and how it is contributing so let us see for example uh, the first one is that what is that the share of agriculture to gdp has been declining since 1951 if you look into the statistics uh, we can we can see that we can observe that since 1951 that means after independence onwards till now the, the, there is a less contribution made by agriculture to this gdp what is gdp gdp means what you can say gross domestic product so in detail we will discuss about this gdp and all in the economics chapter second chapter that is sectors of the indian economy but before that just you can just simply imagine that how much it is contributing to this economy national economy is that from the statistics since 1951 what we can observe is that we the agriculture is contributing very less to the economy or very less to this gdp but when it comes to the employment 52 percent of the population they are all dependent upon this farming or agriculture that means more than half of the population in the country they are all dependent upon this agriculture but whether its contribution to this uh, gdp it is declining day by day so we will also see the problems faced by this agriculture then therefore since it is contributing less then more number of people are dependent upon this agriculture therefore government has decided or it has made some efforts to modernize this agriculture why because it is contributing less to the economy and more number of people are employed therefore government it is decided that we need to modernize this agriculture we need to bring some new changes in this agriculture so there were some changes brought by the government in this agriculture what are those the, the government established something known as icar icar means indian council of agricultural research which helps in developing some new technologies new variety of seeds or new types of researches in this agriculture this will be done through this icar or indian council of agricultural research not only that there were some other things such as agricultural universities have been set up then veterinary services have been made then animal breeding centers so all these things why government has set up is that in order to improve this agriculture and to modernize this agriculture and it has also set up horticultural development as well as weather forecast that means horticulture means we all know growing up of plants trees as well as flowers then at the same time the government has also uh, uh, what is that developed weather forecast that means uh, before it used to inform the farmers by using some technology saying that within few days there may be a rainfall or within few days there won't be any rainfall so like this it helps the farmers when to sow seeds when to harvest when to take precautions in this agriculture through this weather forecast so that is why government has also brought this weather forecasting system so all these changes all these uh, changes were brought by the government in order to modernize this agriculture then if you can see the table which has given in your textbook what it shows that means the contribution made by the agriculture to the gdp as actually is decreasing so if you can see here agriculture sector industrial sector service sector so just see the agriculture sector in 2013 and 14 it has been contributing 4.2 percent to the gdp but in 2014 and 15 it is in minus 
zero point two. Then again, if you take it is. 1.1 in 2015 and 16 so what we can observe from here is that the contribution made by the agriculture to the gdp is getting reduced becoming or declining day by day so we will see what are the main reasons why this agriculture is getting uh, declining or why it is contributing less to the economy so just now we have seen that the contribution made by the agriculture towards GDP is declining day by day. So what might be the reasons? What are the reasons why this agriculture is contributing lesser to the GDP is that there are certain reasons. What are these? The first one is that farmers face, uh, facing big challenge from international competition. What do you mean by that? Because we are facing some serious challenge from or serious competition from international goods or international countries. For example, there are many countries in the world where they are producing more and more goods and what they are trying to do is that they are trying to sell in this country or in other countries. So in that process, they are selling their goods at a cheaper rate than the rate which we at the rate at which we are selling. Therefore, most of the people they are preferring this international goods. Therefore, our farmers are facing this bigger challenge. Then the next one is reduction in public investment. What do you mean by this is that the government has started reducing the expenditure or investment on this agriculture because the government has been shifting its focus towards some other activities. Therefore, the government it started reducing the investment in this agriculture. Then the next one is that subsidy on fertilizers has been decreased. What do you mean by this is that usually government provides subsidies to the farmers. For example, for example, if you take a fertilizer bag, if the cost of this fertilizer, original fertilizer bag is 1000 rupees, by giving subsidy, subsidy means simply you can remember, give a government giving discount to the farmers. So the government what it will do is that it will sell this fertilizer bag only at 600 rupees and remaining 400 rupees will be given by the or will be paid by the government. But slowly over a period of time what government has done is that it slowly started decreasing this subsidies that means instead of selling at 600 it is selling at 800 or even at 900 giving lesser discount or lesser subsidy. Therefore it is also one of the reason why for farmers are unable to produce more in this agriculture then the next one is that reduction on import duties on agricultural products suppose if we are importing anything from these other countries maybe for example take we are importing onions from other countries suppose the original cost of these onions is suppose 1 kg is equal to 50 rupees just imagine so but what government is deciding is that what government will do is that it will put some kind of tax that means if they want to sell that in our country it will be 10 rupees extra or 10 rupees tax they will add so therefore when it comes to india the cost of this onions will be 60 rupees but what government is doing is that instead of putting tax of 10 rupees it is just putting tax of 5 rupees or 3 rupees or 2 rupees that means tax on import duties is actually decreasing so what happens people suppose once it has it has been sold for 60 rupees but now if it is coming only for 50 rupees 52 rupees what people will do is that people will mainly buy the products from other countries and they will not try to buy the goods in india so that is the reason why our farmers also not getting encouragement to produce more and more products in this agriculture why because these are some of the reasons one is facing challenge from international competition reduction in public investment and subsidy on fertilizers decreased and reduction on import duties that means uh, reduction on import taxes also the reason why farmers are unable to produce more to the uh, more in the agriculture then next one is the last topic is that impact of globalization on agriculture what do you mean by this what is this globalization how it is affecting this agriculture globalization means simply you can say interconnection between the countries or integration of these countries without any boundaries or without any borders having some relationship with the other countries we can call it as this globalization and is it good for agriculture or is there any impact on this agriculture so let us see this thing so globalization is not a new phenomena for our country why because our country is being exposed to other countries since centuries ago onwards why because we indians 
we are the our country was the main attraction for trading therefore many european countries they have come to india and they have done trading in that process we used to export many things to this other countries especially we have exported things such as spices cotton as well as this indigo mainly since 19th century onwards we can say we indians were following this globalization and we were the main attraction for products such as spices cotton as well as indigo why because indian spices have huge demand in european countries as well as indian cotton is having also very good demand for this uh, textile mills in foreign as well as uh, special in european countries then indigo is also having a very good demand in this european countries i think you might have learned in your history regarding this champaran movement in the year 1917 where farmers were forcefully uh, forced to grow this indigo so because by seeing all these things what we can say is that we indians are not new to this globalization since centuries onwards we are following this globalization we are maintaining the relations with other countries and what we were exporting we were mainly exporting spices cotton as well as indigo but the original globalization when it has started after getting independence is that our indian government has opened our country to all other countries to maintain some relations that is after this 1990s that means in the year 1991 the government has brought some of the changes which says that now we are open to every country we will export anything we will import anything so with that reforms brought by the government our country has been officially uh, exposed for this globalization but once this globalization has been started in the country there was a main impact on this agriculture so what kind of impact it was is that indian farmers were unable to compete with the developed countries though we were the largest producers of this rice cotton jute or etc etc but still we are unable to compete with this international goods or we are unable to compete with this developed countries why because the main reason is that there were there is a high subsidy is given in the foreign countries for the farmers but whereas in india as you have seen reduction or subsidy on fertilizers has been declining but whereas in foreign countries the government is providing more and more subsidies to their farmers therefore what farmers are doing it has been a, a very good encouragement for farmers in the other countries especially in the developed countries and they are producing more and more so the surplus or the extra product which they are producing they are selling in the other countries at a cheaper rate but if you compare the condition in india in india the situation is different the government is decreasing the subsidies which ultimately leading to this uh discouragement for these farmers and at the same time they are they are selling their product at a higher rate so people those who are buying these goods they are mainly preferring these goods from developed countries so this is the main impact on this indian agriculture or you can say on indian farmers because of this globalization once we opened up our country many countries they are ready to sell their agriculture products in india at a cheaper rate and to make profits the main reason is that because their governments are providing highly subsidies high subsidies to these farmers so now we have we are in such a situation that we need to make some of the changes or we need to find out some other alternatives in the agriculture itself to make more and more productive to make more and more effective at the same time to increase this farmers so let us see what are these things or what are the ways through which we can improve our agriculture so what are the ways through which we can make the agriculture more profitable and successful as we have seen it has been facing some problems because of this globalization so what can be the solution what are the ways through which we can make this agriculture more profitable is that there are some ways by which we can make it more profitable that the first one what government has tried to do is that it has tried to implement something known as this green revolution where usage of hiv seeds but this green revolution was not successful everywhere in the country only few states were successful at the same time this green revolution they require more and more fertilizers at the same time more and more irrigation facilities so therefore the government it has been trying to shift from green revolution to this 
means something known as this gene revolution gene revolution means what you can simply say genetical engineering where by which by modifying the genes of these seeds or by doing this genetical engineering we can bring some new variety of seeds uh, and which can cope up with the climate which require less water at the same time which gives more production so the next in future is that uh, we should go with this gene revolution or we can also call it as this genetical engineering then the next one is this uh, organic farming you all know that i think this organic farming what do you mean by this organic farming by using only natural fertilizers that means we should not uh, use all the chemicals or chemical uh, factory made products we should use only natural manure in the process of production and this can also help the farmers to improve their income why because nowadays this organic farming is more attractive at the same time has more growth in this country why because nowadays people are preferring more food items from this organic production therefore farmers they should try to have this organic farming by using this natural manure then the next one is that farmers should diversify their cropping pattern from cereals to high value crops what are these cereals usually you see rice paddy maize all these things food items can be called as is cereals but from cereals we have to go for this something known as high value crops so what are these high value crops what are the benefits of these high value crops are that if you can see some of the benefits of these high value crops the first one is that these high value crops they will increase the income of the farmer this is the first benefit then the next one is that it also reduces environmental degradation that means it is not even harmful for this environment also then what are the examples of this high value crops are that fruits medicinal herbs flowers vegetables biodiesel crops such as jojoba as well as jatropha these are some of the examples of this high value crops and the other very benefit of this high value crops is that they also require less irrigation that means less water is required for their growth so if farmers can diversify their cropping pattern if farmers can follow the other methods of farming instead of that is by going for organic farming or maybe going for this high value crops or the government should also focus more on this gene revolution so if we can follow all these methods we can actually improve this agriculture and we can actually make the agriculture into more profitable and more successful so with this we have completed this chapter known as this agriculture so next we will discuss the new chapter from economics that is sectors of the indian economy thank you